So I live in a super tiny studio in London and I challenge myself to take some self-portraits with super random objects, free. You don't need to buy anything because it's objects for sure you have around the house or similar things. And the pictures came out super creative and I actually love them. I was very upset because my space is very tiny because I'm moving flat in London, but I have to stop for now and I have to move next month because we are in another lockdown and there is nothing to do. I was super bored and I was angry and it's like, okay, I'm gonna do self-portraits and I had to make it happen for them to be nice and be creative with what I have around my place, which is literally like a room. So I'm gonna show you the technique. I'm gonna show you the lighting and the settings I used. I'm gonna give you tips for you to be able to be more creative with whatever you have even if you don't have a space and even if you don't have too much money to buy props because these are for free you're gonna have them around the house i was super upset and in the end i end up doing nice pictures so actually we put our own limitations so i couldn't record the behind the scenes properly because the space is very reduced so i didn't have the space to record a wide angle to record myself doing it but i'm gonna show you the pictures i did and i'm gonna deconstruct all those pictures to show you who i did them So these are the objects I use, I had around the house. I know they are very random and they are not attractive at all. So please stay till the end because you're gonna be able to see how I managed to do creative pictures with these random objects I found around my place and I'm sure you also have. So the first thing I'm gonna tell you, this is the only thing if you don't have, you may have to buy if you want it, of course, otherwise not. But all the pictures I did, they are very colorful. I love to use RGB lights and I think if you follow my channel, you know that already. So I was using the newer RGB lights. It's, this one is one of them. The other one I use it for the video as well because they are video lights. And it comes in a set of two and you can use a lot of colors, all the wheel of colors. This would be it. It comes with two light stands, it comes with the, um, with the cover to carry it, and it comes with two heads, two light heads, and it's very, very, very affordable, guys. You have the link in the description below. It's very affordable, and um, guys, this really, really, really spice up your portraits. I use RGB light a lot. If you follow my Instagram account as well, you can see I use colors a lot. So this is the only thing if you don't have and you want, you may have to get. There is more affordable ones as well. I'm gonna put you below the tiny one I have. You can do great things with that one, but it's just one. And these pictures I use two because using two colors is always gonna give depth to the picture and it's gonna be nicer. So that's up to you guys. This is the only thing you may not have. The rest I promise you have for sure at home. So saying this, the first object I use and for sure you have or something very similar is this. I know it's super random. It's like a mixer jar. It comes with a blender. These are the pictures. And the only thing I did is put myself in front of the camera with a tripod. I put the jar very close to the lens, as you can see right now. But what I was doing is shooting with a very shallow depth of field, F4, I was doing, putting the jar super close to the lens, covering it a bit and focusing just myself. And obviously, because I was using two lights, one light, was with one color on my face and the other light was focusing the background in another color. So actually the orange and blue is super nice combination. Hot with cold colors is great for pictures. They are very pleasant to the eye. So I was focusing one on my face, one in the back, putting with one hand the jar in the lens and with the other hand I was holding my phone because I was shooting remotely my camera with the Canon Camera Connect. If you use Sony, Sony has its own app as well to shoot remotely and this is great because you can even see in the screen how you look like. So it's a question of putting the jar, move a bit the face and pose. If you don't have a wireless camera, you have an old camera and you don't have wireless or um, a wireless way to shoot it, I mean like an app, you can use a remote control and it's very inexpensive, very cheap. You have the link in the description below. I sometimes use it as well. And you can shoot remotely with a cable connected to the camera. And this is super, super easy, super cheap. And it's the other way to do it if you don't have an app or your camera doesn't have Wi-Fi, basically. 
So that was the first picture. The second picture is exactly the same without using any jar. But the only thing I did is in post-production, remember that in post-production you always can spice up the pictures, I did a double exposure. So I was shooting again with one light on my face in one color, in the background with another color to give depth and it's more interesting to the eye to see two colors than just one. And then in post-production I did a double exposure. You have a tutorial about this in my Patreon account. I do offer extra tutorials there, creativity, social media and about photography business and creativity business so I do extra content there you don't see in YouTube and you can collaborate for as little as three dollars but that's up to you guys you would have in exchange very nice exclusive content so this is up to you guys but just to let you know I do more tutorials over there so yeah this picture was done in another exposure and always think like when you do a portrait in post-production you can always do way much more to make the picture interesting the third picture is a washing machine, it's not an object, but actually I was like, okay, I want to shoot through something. As you may know, I like to put things in front of the lens and putting myself in the second frame and play with depth. So I was looking around, I was looking around, it's like, mm, I can open the door of the washing machine, go to the floor, put myself in the other side and take some pictures and let's see how they come out. And actually, they come out nice, I like them. In this situation, I have just used one light and that's it. I put the camera in the other side of the door of the, of the washing machine and then I put myself in the other side. And then to get out of um, the classic portrait, I, you can shoot body parts as well. You can shoot your shoulders, um, your chest, your neck. I think it's very interesting to play with these parts as well. It's not just portrait. You can shoot as well like a macro photography of your eye, half a face, play with frames, play with angles and play with body parts, not just with the face because sometimes is boring if you don't know which pose to do and the fourth picture would be just one light as well and this picture is super 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 simple because it's just one light in front of me same with the camera connect of the app shooting my camera and that's it I didn't have to do anything else in a white wall I'm sure you have a white wall on any wall in your house and with a little bit of space is enough and then again post-production so what I did because uh, yellow and blue works really well together in Adobe, in the website, you have a color wheel to see complementary colors that work really well to the eye. Videographers do this to choose the color gels they use in films. I'm gonna put the link below as well so you can see it. This is great to have great combinations of colors. And then I did in post-production in Photoshop with one brush, I just painted in front of my eyes in yellow and actually it came quite creative because again, use Photoshop or post-production techniques to spice up your portraits. It's not everything out of the camera sometimes. So you wanna do a bit of graphic design on them or put something more creative or artistic, you can do it in Photoshop or any other program you may use. I love Photoshop, but you can use any. So this one is super simple, one light, and then in post-production with one brush, I painted it on my eyes and it came out this way and I personally like it. And then the fifth picture is movement. I love using movement. So what I did is using movement, in this one I used just one light and I used a very low shutter speed, super low. So what I did is while I was shooting with the phone, with the camera connect, at the time I was shooting, I was moving. So because I'm shooting at a very low shutter speed, I'm gonna be moved, I'm gonna be blurry. So I experiment moving from side to side, from top to bottom. And I love these weird pictures, guys. Maybe you don't like them, but I love kind of abstract portraits as well. Very edgy, dark sometimes. And this is the way I get them. Just moving around and creating blurriness in the picture. So this is another technique you can use and I love. It's more abstract, so if you like this, you can use that and play with the shutter speed. The next picture would be <laughs> with this, with a candle. This one is properly smashed because it's the one I used. I put all the floor full of wax, so it wasn't too pleasant to clean afterwards, but you can use any light. I didn't have any light, I didn't have a torch, even though I'm gonna buy one uh, in colors to play with for photography, but I use a candle because I didn't have a torch or anything like that. So again, what I did is putting myself in front of the camera, holding the candle, holding the phone to shoot remotely, and then when I switch it on, lower shutter speed, slow shutter speed, sorry, and then you do like this quickly, 
in front of the camera without moving yourself, just moving my arm because otherwise I would appear blurry. So you move like this and it's gonna appear this light effect and I'm gonna appear like frozen. So this is another kind of technique. It's more simple with a torch. I don't recommend you to use a candle. I use a candle, but it was messy because I didn't have a torch. But it's just to show you how when you don't have anything around you, I didn't have a torch. Okay, why do I have similar? A candle, and I use a candle. So this is the effect I've got. This one was with one light as well. Just one light, one color gel, and the candle. And the next picture would be using a similar technique with an empty bottle of water. I didn't know what to use. It's like, what I'm gonna do? Okay, mm, a bottle of water, what can I do? I can shoot through it. No, because it's too messy. So what I did is putting myself in front and in one hand, I have the camera connect again to shoot. And in the other hand, I have the bottle. I was at a very slow shutter speed without moving my face, but moving my arm. So I was having the bottle very close to the lens. And when I was shooting, I was moving the bottle like this. So because I was shooting at a very slow shutter speed, the bottle reflection with the lights do this effect, like moving effect. And I love this picture. I really love it. It's like light leaks naturally created by a bottle of plastic. So at least we can reuse plastic in a way. So uh, yeah, there's another creative way to do it. So as you see, I play a lot with movement and with slow shutter speed. So many people, they get stuck in portrait photography, like posing, they get stuck with just the outfit, the way to pose, but if you play with camera settings and with color gels, you can create a lot of stuff. And there is so many new ideas I'm gonna keep doing, but this has just few of them. And I'm gonna show you the next picture. The next picture was done with <laughs> with my tights. I had some tights and uh, this is what I did. You take your camera, so this creates a dreamy effect and it's very nice actually. You can use it for, for men portrait, for women portrait. So you take the lens, by the way, all the photo shoot was taken with this lens with a 24, 105 millimeters from Canon. I love this lens. So guys, if you don't have the budget to buy too many lenses, this one I know is very expensive, but with this one, you can shoot everything. You can shoot landscape, portrait photography, um, I don't know, street photography as well, because it has zoom. Even sports photography, it doesn't have too much zoom till 105, but it still is good zoom for sports photography. So this one I recommend for photographers who doesn't have too much equipment. It's expensive, but it's very versatile. You can shoot everything. Otherwise, my favorite lenses to shoot with are the Sigma Art. I have the 35 millimeters and then 105 millimeters, and they're my favorite. And I'm a Canon girl, I have everything Canon, all my cameras are Canon, everything is Canon, I have lenses from Canon, but for portrait photography, the Sigma Art lenses are amazing, and I'm sure other photographers agree with me, they are super sharp. Anyway, so what you would do with the tight is super simple, it's just pour it through the lens. So you would, took, you would take the thin part, and you just put it like this. And believe it or not, it focuses. It's able to focus the camera. So it shoots through this and it creates this haze, this uh, dreamy effect, which flattens the picture, but at the same time, it looks like film. So this is another effect I use and it's super, super nice. And then for the last picture, what I would do is combining all these effects. So what I did is shooting at a slow shutter speed same time I was using the tight, and same time I was using two lights, one focusing to me completely, and then I had one tiny light, which uh, is not a torch, um, I don't have it here right now, it's like a little bowl, which uh, is like a kind of projector, so what I did is put the main light in front of me, and then the kind of projector I was holding it in my hand, in my face, to create a second note of color, and then with the tight, and it created this effect. So. The possibilities are endless, guys, and I could carry on doing things because actually, don't get discouraged at the beginning because I started to shoot and I was like, how the hell am I gonna be creative in a room with a very tiny wall and with no, no props? I didn't have any prop, actually, <laughs> because using this and this and some tights and a candle, you wouldn't even consider it a prop. I wasn't, and in the end, the pictures came out nice. People wouldn't 
think they are those objects because you cannot see them because I play with the shutter speed. So do the same, expand your creativity and tell me what you think in the comments below because I really want to hear you have more ideas because there is millions of ideas and I love to listen to all because it's super good to take inspiration from others. Take a look at my Instagram account because I share everything over there. And then what I'm gonna do with all these techniques is using it with clients I have next month and I love shooting with colors. So guys, if you love shooting with colors, I'm gonna show you some options below. Take a look because actually the newer lights are very good for video, for photography. They act as a continuous light. You can control the temperature and you can control so many colors and you can be super creative with them and they are very low budget. But you don't have colors or you wanna use something cheaper, use color gels, but these are not lights, are like, um, I don't have them here, they are in Spain, I have so much stuff in Spain. Um, they are the, the gels, you just put them in the lens and it changes the feeling of the whole picture. And they are cheaper, they are maybe like 20 pounds, 30 pounds, they are cheaper. But for me, light is lifesaver. I'm using one of them for the video right now, another one of them behind me, if you see a color gel here like orange to give depth to the video. So actually I think it's a very good investment and it's not very expensive. So uh, yeah, and I can be more creative with them for my photo shoots. So that's all for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry I couldn't record behind the scenes. It's super tiny, this space. But I hope you enjoyed the construction video with all the settings. And please, please, please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed my videos and comment below if you have any questions. I will see you very soon again.